Okay. 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 No, but today we're getting um, a very interesting lecture, I'm sure, by our own Dr. Fred Ballerain, who's been with us now how many years? It's your third year here? Third year? And he teaches in the biology department, and um, I think that you'll have a, a very good time because he gives very good talks. And so um, let's give him a warm welcome here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this seminar. And uh, I also want to welcome my wife, dear wife, Rachel. Rachel. And baby Grace, peace. Grace, peace. God bless you. So this seminar is a follow-up of the seminar that we had uh, in March last year. And we talked about two weight loss devils. Now, this is our outline. I will tell you about what motivated me, and also talk about the obesity problem, and some misconceptions about weight, a little bit about the biology of weight gain and loss, and then look at the weight gain the third weight gain devil, and we shall do some kind of conclusions. So, at times I read the news and follow up the trends, and you can see some things like, you know, talking about Americans dying earlier than their international peers. And this is quite of a challenge because Americans are having a, a poor kind of health status, yet America spends more money on health than virtually any nation on earth. So where is the problem? And also CNN is telling us that you know, it's now time to address a neglected global epidemic. Uh, this is a weight gain epidemic, and it's so, so spread wide all over the world that it's sort of becoming a kind of a pandemic. Now, the cost of heart disease, stroke, diabetes alone could reduce the GDP of Russia, China, and India up 5% within five years. And those are big countries, you know, if you consider that, you know, the GDP could be reduced because of problems with these kinds of diseases. And the latest one here is telling us of being overweight or obese is being linked to 10 common cancers. This is the BBC. Look at this guy. He started off well with a flat, you know, tummy. And, you know, as life improved, you know, it goes on slowly until you can see, you know, he's like, he has gained some substantial amount of weight. Now, there are some countries where weight gain is associated with money. For example, in, in Africa, you know, if you are lean like me, if I went back to Africa, people would think that I'm suffering in the US. They would say, please, you know, you bet, I think those guys are punishing you. You better come back because, you know, <laughs> why, why don't you put on some weight? So in some places, people really associate it with, you know, good status and that kind of stuff. But there are certain hidden things inside that goodness. So, in the very first State of the Union address, which was given by our university president, he mentioned something that each morning as they left home for school, I would challenge my daughters to be part of the solution today, not part of the problem. I just want to be part of the solution. I want Lotan University to be part of the solution. We can be. We are. So, Lotanu, we need to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. And after the first speech that I gave on weight gain and loss, I got encouraging feedback and some people were, I could meet people out of even the university who were asking me, you know, why are you giving, when are you giving the next seminar? You know, some people have been watching this videos in New York and other places and giving me some kind of feedback. 
So I thought that maybe I need to, uh, to handle something else on this. So there are some concepts and misconceptions about weight. And one of it is, uh, you know, people are overweight because of eating a lot of food. Is it true? <laughs> well, <laughs> eating fats is a major contributor to weight gain. I've already given the answer that it's not necessarily so. Because, you know, there was a time when they told us you have to eat little fat or something like that. Because if you eat fat, that's a major contributor to weight gain. But it's not necessarily so, as we shall see. Because first of all, how many of you have ever eaten a chunk of fat? <laughs> because they told you not to do that. Try one day, you know, and just eat the fat and meat. You realize that you can't go as far as somebody who is eating in me. Because the satiety center will be activated immediately and you'll feel full, you know? So fat full, full tends to make people feel full. And of course, there are other things which we shall look at. So to lose weight, all you need to do is exercise more and eat less. You know? So you see people jogging around. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, they end up still being frustrated because, you know, there's no substantial decrease in weight. So it goes beyond exercise, you know. Exercise is good, but losing weight goes beyond that. Now, we have various categories of molecules that we can use for our food. We have carbohydrates, and these are some of the examples like bread, corn, potatoes, rice, and pasta. And then we have lipids, where you have all these kinds of things, cheese, ice cream, oil, lard, butter, and proteins. And these are some examples of our proteins. And of course, nucleic acids, so because of course, whenever you are eating any kind of cells having some, DNA and RNA, so those ones are also chopped up and they can be recycled into the system, as, but although they are not necessarily the major kinds of compounds. So now let me go briefly into how we utilize our sources of energy. And I will not bother you too much with uh, a lot of details, but perhaps this one gives me a framework of explaining what I want to talk about. So if we have carbohydrates, I, we have already mentioned the carbohydrates, they are always broken down into simple sugars, and the key one is you ultimately go into glucose, and then this one is going to be broken down, and it will enter some kind of cycle, respiratory cycle, and then all the way until you, you release this ATP. So these kinds of things which are called ATP are actually the gas for ourselves, no? That's the, the gas for ourselves. So if you got, that's when you go to the gas station, you collect the gas, when you eat carbohydrates, you get this kind of stuff, that's what makes me walk around, that's what makes you walk around and, and enable your cells to function normally. So essentially, that's what happens. And we also have the proteins. Proteins are also broken down and they feed into this kind of cycle where you can get release of our ATP and other kinds of components. And the final product broken down is money or something of side like that. And we also have fats. Now, fats are also broken down into glycerol, which enters here. But this one can also go back and it be converted into fat. We have fatty acids. Actually, fatty acids are the chief source of energy. They really, because they have long chains and a lot of hydrogens and water and, and oxygen molecules. So they give more energy than carbohydrates. But there is something about the body. Now, as you look at this, you see that we can get these fats, they can be broken down and enter this cycle like that. And also, when you reach here, the fat can be, fat acids can be broken down like that, but it can also go back. Meaning that, if you add carbohydrates, okay, they can be broken down to here, and they supply the building molecules that can be recycled back to build fat. Or even when carbohydrates are broken up this level here, it's possible for them to go back and they build fat. We want just to get that kind of key concept. 
of how do we gain weight. So what happens is that if you eat a low carbohydrate diet, you are not going to run out of energy. What happens is that our cells, they are wired to prefer using carbohydrates as the source of energy. So they're easily broken down and they can easily enter the chain for us to get our energy. Now, when the carbohydrate supply is depleted, they will now begin to, bro to break down these guys. So that's why it's possible on a low carbohydrate diet to lose weight. But again, if you use, if you get too less of carbohydrates, you can end up having some kind of problem. So there, there needs to be some kind of balance out there. Now, what happens if I did eat more than what I need? in terms of energy. Now, because we have refined foods, these, some of these foods are combined, like for example, biscuits, and maybe crackers, they can have <coughs> more energy than maybe a pound of potatoes. So it's very easy for someone to consume more energy without necessarily eating a lot of food per, maybe per weight. Does it make sense? If you eat these refined foods, with a lot of carbohydrates packed in them in small packages, like for example, maybe one pack of biscuit, you could be eating like somebody who is eating maybe four pounds of potato. Now, whatever is excess, when the body, you know, unfortunately, like unlike our gas tank, because our gas tank, if you maybe you go somewhere and you find that gas is cheap, you go maybe out of this area and you go to some place and realize, oh, gas is cheap, you know? So you go and try to fill in your tank. You know, I see you know, some people try even to do that. Add, add some more of that, you know. Try to push it even when the, the pump has stopped. But for our body, you know, we have a limit. What happens, whatever excess that you take on, because the car will stop somewhere and, you know, you cannot put in more gas, you know. But for the body, I mean, as long as you choose to eat, you know, you can still continue eating as, as long as you are still eating. So what the body does, this excess will be broken down, especially these carbohydrates. They'll go all up here or up here, and they will shoot back and store in fat tissue. So these carbohydrates, and I'm calling carbohydrates and sugars because for our common language, we normally know sugar is different from carbohydrates, so I will use that. So I can say that carbohydrates and sugar are the big, are the big weight gain devils. If you eat more of those, you are likely to gain more weight. Why? Every excess of that energy is going to be kept in fat tissue. Are we all right up this stage? Okay. So if you are eating carbohydrates, you are eating a lot of pasta, you know, you are eating a lot of tortillas, you know, and even if you say, well, okay, I don't like sugar, you know, they told me sugar is not good, you know, that I will eat my, you know, tortillas, and you eat a lot of it, it will be converted and you will gain some weight, you know. Okay, so now let us see what happens when we gain, when we get in a lot of sugar in our body. We have a hormone that is called insulin. Now, insulin helps to ensure that our amount of sugar in our body or in our bloodstream is kept in a certain kind of limit. It's like some kind of controlling our sugar thermostat. So, when, when you eat for example, a, a, a meal that is maybe pasta or some kind of rich, energy-rich meal, what will happen, we have some kind of uh, cells in the pancreas which are going to release insulin. Because normally, this is our normal level of glucose in the blood, 70 to 110 milligrams per 100 milliliters of blood. So if we... If we eat it and it's a lot, we are going to stimulate insulin. So now, insulin 
is going now to activate the <coughs> liver cells and also uh, muscle cells to take up the extra glucose. So it's like it shunts it away. The insulin will tell those guys, oh, liver guy, there's something here to store. So please pack it. Pack it, you know. Uh, or the, the muscle cells also pack it. So now what will happen is you end up with storing of your glucose in a form which is called glycogen. Now, plants store their glucose or their sugars in another form which is called starch. So now this is what's happening here. Now, all this kind of thing, if we, you are getting more, the fat is now, uh, it will also encourage cells. Now, if you have excess, for example, now you have taken some and you are now having a, a level elevated, the liver will take some. But the liver is limited, you know. It says, okay, guy, you know, I, 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 no, I, cannot, I can't take it anymore, you know. So now what happens? So, muscle, muscle, please, can you help me? This guy is having too much. So muscle also does what? Store some as like Then muscle has got to say limit. So muscle says, I think this guy is too much. What shall we do, you know? We can't kill him. Let us, but we can't. <laughs> 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 you know? So what, what are we going to do? This guy, we have a, an area which is having a big, you know, like for example, times if you have a lot of stuff in your house, you go to the garage, you know, and the garage is full, maybe you are always good at buying stuff in uh, garage sales, you know, so the garage is full, <laughs> the car is now outside, so what do you do now? Let us go, what is it called, that out, you open the city. In the attic, you know? so let us put everything in the attic. Let us hide it in the attic. So now, literally, that's a bigger, I'm sure that's a bigger or extra kind of space where the, 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 the fat tissue can be stored. So there is an area which keeps up whatever is excess. So whatever the liver cannot take, whatever the muscles cannot take, is pushed into, into the fat tissue and you forget about it. Okay? Later you forget about it. Okay. So now what happens then, supposing you are fasting or you skip a meal. So when you skip a meal, what's going to happen? Your glucose level is going to fall down. So when the glucose level falls down below the, the required amount, like this one here, what is going to happen? We are now going to get cells and other kinds of cells, the other ones were called beta cells, these one of the pancreas are going to release another hormone, which is called glucagon. So glucagon is going to do what? To tell liver, can you give me some of that glucose that you kept? You know? So it's broken down and it's taken back into the bloodstream. So now, once you get there, you are okay. So you can see what insulin and glucagon is doing. Glucagon mobilizes the storage sources. Insulin tells them to store, to be stored. So in actual, you gain weight only when your insulin levels are high. I think that's what we have agreed on. It's only when the insulin levels are high that you gain weight. Why? Why, do, why is that so? Because it's cold. Your body's trying to store more of it. Yeah. Insulin is telling the body, store, store, store. Okay? Rather than use up, you are storing. Essentially, the energy, the energy should come in just enough for us to do our activity <coughs> until the next time. So that's the thing. So to release toward fat and lose weight, you must keep your insulin level low. Okay. So the order in, of storage is, we have already said, liver glycogen followed by mysoglycogen and then fat in the so-called adipose tissue. That's the order. And now the order of storage is the order of release. Okay? So if you are to release in case you are starving, maybe you are fasting for one day, <coughs> you will deal with this one. If, if you fasted maybe for three days or something, that's when you begin to cut this. Maybe if you fasted more, that's when you got that. So it's quite difficult to get this energy source back. So what you have stored, in fact, many times when you store things in the attic, you don't even think about them, you know? So the things, if you lack something, this one, which are near you, are the, where the, your eyes go. Until you finish those, then you think about what's in the attic. So now, it is difficult to lose fat. So 
the way to lose fat is to have your energy needs exceed the energy supply. That is the way you can lose fat. So another thing that we want to know is that obesity does not depend on your body weight, but on the amount of adipose tissue. So don't just look at people who are you know, looking like they are big and you say, oh, I've, I've caught another obese guy. No? <laughs> we have to look at amount of adipose tissue the person is having. Now let us look at something which is, why is it challenging to, to diet? If you look, we have some kind of uh, uh, hormones which are involved in this kind of situation here. Like for example, if you have leptin, insulin, and this peptide thyrokinase, this one, they suppress appetite. Now, another hormone, which is called glaring, this one makes you feel hungry. So in other words, when your stomach is not distended, glaring will dis release, and it will tell your brain that, oh, I need to eat, and you begin to feel hungry. Now, when you are full, glaring will stop, and then you feel full. Okay. The problem now is that people who are trying to lose weight, they tend to have increased levels of this glaring. And that's why it's difficult to stay on that. And some, of, some people who have tried, I think you can see the challenge. They, they start one year, that of January 1, this year I must lose weight. You know? And they are really serious. But there is another, another animal that is hiding there, which is telling them, man, eat something. And that's glaring. OK. So now, if I'm trying to diet, uh, what can I do about this glaring? Okay? Remember that when your stomach is empty, glaring is secreted. When your stomach is stretched, glaring secretion stops. So where is the solution now? Stretch your, stom your stomach. <laughs> Try to stretch your stomach using soluble fiber that you cannot digest. And if you have a tendency to overeat, you can also use this kind of fiber, like this uh, selenium fiber, or uh, maybe about 30 minutes before you eat, or before you go for a bath, if I, for example. Okay? And make sure you take it with a lot of water, because this powder, this, this powder has got a very high potential for, ex <laughs> for, for taking up water and expanding. In fact, it can expand 50 times. If you get just one, spoonful and you put it in a, and you put maybe a half uh, a liter of water, it's going to make it thick, like porridge. But it can help. And another thing about it, your intestinal microflora, those bugs that are normally in your intestine, they will enjoy it. It will promote your intestinal health. It's also going to help you in case, you know, some people are constipated, it's constipated. it will also help you on constipation and other kinds of stuff. Obviously, if you have some medical conditions, you, you need to, uh, to seek the, your, the, the, the advice of your doctor before taking it. But that's one of the ways to outsmart glaring. Rather than snacking, because they are, you know, <laughs> I've read about snacks and put them in my office. But one of the problems with snacks is that you eat one, you know? And when you are eating one, you are literally hooked to eat another one. <laughs> How many of you have had that kind of experience? You know? So, you know, it ends up being really frustrating. <laughs> so, you, by the end of the day, if you had one pack of biscuit, you would have consumed the thing. Yet, you intended maybe to, to eat one per day. And of course, we have now people who are trying to, you know, I'm trying to eat healthy. Okay, what they do, they can come maybe and go to some club and they buy maybe whether any kind of fruit, you know, a lot of it. Maybe whether they are apples or whatever, and they put in the oven. So what will happen? By the end of the day, the person will have maybe eaten eight or ten apples, you know, and they are trying to eat to, to do what? To eat healthy. But what's happening, that's too much sugar still, even if it's coming from natural sources. You know? So you have to really look at the amount of sugar that you are taking. So eating healthy, you also need to calculate how much of this sugar I'm consuming. Otherwise, you can eat strawberries and maybe a package or half a packet of strawberries in a day, and you are thinking that you are eating healthy. Still, that's not going to be healthy. Okay, so now, what's obesity? 
uh, last time I showed this one, is if you're having a body mass index beyond 25, and uh, it's, it's measured in kilograms, and the good thing is that there is an online calculator. So what you do, if you, you look at that, on, or you take your weight, and then uh, put it in here, and it will just calculate for you. So there is also a table which can tell you if you are below 18, you are underweight. You know? So don't think that anybody who is, you know, looking lean, that they are necessarily healthy. You have to be sure of your weight. If you are around that, 18, 25, 24.5, 29, you are normal. 25, 29.9, you are overweight. And that and above, you are considered obese. Now, the challenge about the body mass index is that it's not a direct measure of obese or fatness. It just measures excess weight rather than fatness per se. So at times you may have challenges of relating body mass index with body fat because factors like age, sex, and ethnicity, and muscle mass can also be affected by that. So let's briefly look at the problem now, obesity problem. The key thing here, central or abdominal obesity is the thing that we need to look critically at because it indicates there's a problem, insulin resistance. And it's part of what they call metabolic syndrome. And metabolic syndrome is actually a, a grouping of various kinds of diseases which are associated with obesity. Like, for example, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, heart disease, stroke, various cancers, dementia, and also preterm death. So now, besides body mass index, we have this central, uh, the, the waist to hip ratio as a clearer, a more direct indicator of abdominal obesity. So besides body mass index, you also need to do this kind of calculation. So if you look at, if you are below 95, if you are a man, you have a low risk of health problems. If you are a lady, you aim at 0 0.8 and below. If you are at 0 0.96 to 1, if you are a man, you are in a moderate risk of health issues. If you are a lady, up to 0 0.85. If you are a man, you are having one, a, 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 hip, a waist to hip ratio of 1 and above, you are at a high risk. If you are a female and you are above 0 0.85, you are at a high risk. So how do I measure that? What you do, you get a tape measure. They are cheap. You can get one in dollar, dollar general or someplace. And you need to go at where this position where you are, there is what? What is this? Belly button. Belly button, okay? <laughs> so you need to either pull it in. Pull it in. Of course, you don't have to. You know, you can do it in your private place without clothes on. <laughs> and try to take, to, to take this measure here. Okay? And then also, look at the largest area of your body, this, this area. So look at the largest spot and take that measurement. Okay? And then get this measurement and divide by that. So that will give you your waist your to the, your hip to waist ratio. And then you can use this calculator. It will tell you. So this is something that you can do by yourself. I cannot just walk around and begin diagnosing it. No? <laughs> you can wait and you can estimate where your risk is. Another way you can do it also is taking this tape measure, put it in, and consider your height. So the, mass, the maximum waist circumstance should be half your height. So take your height and look at your waist by pulling it in. You know, in fact, if you cannot pull in and it comes like this, then, you know, just begin to consider that there is something packed up under there. Okay? <laughs> right. That's it. Now, there is a recent study which is actually showing where they started. A, a very, it was actually a very huge study of 5.24 million people in, in the UK. And they actually showed that obesity was associated to 10 common cancers. And obviously, there has been a very massive increase in obesity globally 
over the last 20 years. And obviously, things like stroke, heart disease, are uh, actually causing a lot of problems to, to our people. Now, when you, we talk about sugar and carbohydrates as the two <coughs> devils, so people, there is a tendency to say, okay, now what am I going to do? I like sugar, but now I've been told that sugar is not good for my weight. So, I heard guys who are advertising that these things have zero calories. So, you give, they give the sweetness, but they have no calories. Because now people are being told that, first, track your calories, track your calories, track your calories. Don't take a lot of calories, you know. So, the question is, do artificial sweeteners really help people to, reduce, to lose weight? Now, various studies have shown otherwise. For example, there was a study which was done by the San Antonio Heart Study. It examined 3,682 adults over seven to eight years. And people who are consuming artificial, uh, artificial sweetened beverages, they consider had a higher body mass index after follow-up. Now, another study was carried out by people in the American Cancer Society and it included a lot of ladies, about almost 80,000 ladies, of various diverse ethnic groups. After one year, people who are using these artificial sweeteners, they gained more weight than the non-artificial sweetener users. Other studies come to similar conclusions, according to this paper by King Yang. So, here are the issues. Sweet taste, irrespective of source, enhances human appetite. So, there is something about taking sweet stuff. They tend to increase your appetite. Artificial sweeteners like aspartame, uh, aspartame, aspartame were, were they, they increase. There was a study which showed that they increase subjective hunger cravings, and there was also increased motivation to eat compared to glucose or water. And studies have shown that calories contained in natural sweeteners may trigger a response to keep the overall energy concept constant and cons uh, the energy oral consumption constant. So if you are using natural sweeteners, they tend to somehow allow for a balance of the energy consumption. But artificial ones, they tend to compel you to overdo it, not to take in more energy than necessary. Now, people wanted to know exactly how does this happen. They used rodent models. So what they did in one study, they fed rats on saccharin. And those ones which were fed on saccharin, they showed a significantly higher total energy intake, and they gained more weight and increased adip or adiposis. That's, uh, uh, you are remembering the adipose tissue, compared to controls which were con conditioned with glucose. So the, the rats which were fed on artificial sweeteners, they ate more and they gained more weight than these ones which were just fed on glucose, which is a natural kind of sweetener. Uh, so the key thing is sweet, sweetness, which is, in other words, if you get sweetness and you have removed calorie content from that sweetness, it has some kind of impact. It gives a kind of incomplete activation of the root, the food reward pathways. In other words, the pathways which are created to give some kind of reward, if you eat, you know, if, if you eat some food, then I'll make you happy, you'll feel okay. If you don't eat food and your stomach is not distended, I'll make you feel bad, I'll make you feel hungry, okay? There are those natural kind of, you know, reward systems. But now, if you take sweetness, and take out the calorie content, like now those artificial sweeteners, what happens, they, they don't, they don't act in completely activate those pathways. So now what happens, they cause the body to compensate, you know, like some kind of, get some kind of compensatory overeating. And uh, that's going to affect the energy balance. Is it making sense? You are eating sweet stuff, but it's not having calories. So now the reward system is imbalanced, you know? 
So the body will be because now I've, I've not yet gotten what I want. I've, I've, you know, I've not eaten, I've not fed the calories. So eat more and you'll, you'll end up actually eating more. So animals generally seek food to satisfy the inherent cra craving for sweetness, even in the absence of the energy need. There's that kind of inherent craving. So lack of complete satisfaction due failure to activate the post the, the post-ingestive component further fuels food-seeking behavior. That's essentially what we have talked about. So somebody will just need to eat more and more. So reduction in the realization response may contribute to a best because now somebody will eat more. Now, the, the thing about artificial sweeteners, because they are just sweet and they don't have calories, they engage, encourage sugar craving and sugar dependence. That's one of the kind of things. So, what about high fructose corn syrup? No, tell us this thing is just having, it's a natural kind of stuff. What does it do? Let us look at this picture here, again. <coughs> this human leptin is responsible, if you have eaten, it's responsible for telling your brain that I am full, okay? So what high fructose corn syrup, some studies have shown that it's linked to leptin resistance. So now what will happen? It will literally mess up with the switch off system here. You take high fructose corn syrup, you don't feel you feel more hungry instead, even when you are you are having enough food in your body. So now that is a problem. And of course there are other things which have been associated, like the kidney stone, diabetes, non alcohol fatty liver syndrome, and high cholesterol. So those are some of the studies which are out there. Now you might say, okay, what about these street sweeteners? Where is the evidence to show that they were linked to increased obesity? If you look at these kind of uh, situations, there are a lot of sweeteners which have been in, uh, in approved, and some of them were banned after being maybe found to be linked to cancer and other problems. But as you can see, right from around 2000, almost 6,000 new artificial sweeteners have been introduced in the U.S. market. But now from the 1960s, you can see that the population, as there was increase of artificial sweeteners, this, you see there was also an increase in obesity with time. So that's, there's at least studies have shown that there has been a linkage between the consumption of artificial sweeteners and obesity. That's why I call it an elusive third devil. It's not easy because something which is not really giving calories, why does it make you gain weight? So rise of in obesity is, has been correlated with increased use of non-calorific artificial sweeteners like astatine in diet coke or in Pepsi One and other food products. So you think these guys are great friends for your weight control? If you are thinking so, think again. Huh? Sweet, sweet and low, cane sugar, nectar, agave, all those kinds of things there. You know, there's a lot of sugar in there. So what now? Read your food labels. Hmm? Read your food labels. Tell somebody. Read your food labels. <laughs> when you go to the dust plant, you, you check whether it is diesel or it is what? Petrol. Why don't you think about your own body? Your level of abdominal fight is a key predictor of many dangerous health conditions. Even normal weight people with belly fat have increased health risks. So even if you are looking like you are having a normal weight, as long as this thing is like this, you know, in, in my previous country they used to call it the patriotic front, you know, that you have this, the patriotic front, patriot. You really, now the question is, ask yourself, do you really need artificial fitness? Do you really need them? That's the question to ask. Now, so now, are we not going to take anything sweet at all? Yeah? There's some good news at this. This stevia is a natural product, a natural herb, and it has been shown in various studies that it's good. Yeah? It has got its anti-glycemic and hypertension antiviral, and it has got some antioxidant properties. Yeah. So if you must take something sweet, you, you better consider a natural sweetener 
And obviously, even the natural sweetener, look at them because people, because they are marketing them, they can put something inside there. Mm -hmm. Make sure that's a, a pure stevia. Okay? Make sure it's pure because people can put certain other stuff, you know, and it can be a problem. Now, God respects your body. The question is, will you? You respect your car, okay? That's why you are careful what kind of gas, what, what kind of stuff you put in it. The Bible is telling me that, don't you know that you are the temple of, the, of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? So you are God's temple. Take good care of your body, okay? Your body is precious. God will use you better when you are healthy than when you are sick. So, another, what Paul is telling us, so whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Knowing that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, is it going to glorify God? Those are some of the things that you have to consider. So, why are Americans dying earlier than their international peers? One of the reasons is that though Americans know what's good for them, few act on it. This is the same conclusion I had from this article. Few people act on what they know. Not only Americans, by the way. You know, it's a global thing. So, will you stand to be counted among the few? That's the question. Ask somebody, will you stand to be counted among the few? Yes. Hmm? <laughs> All right. God bless you. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know about that. At least there are, for people who are having problems, because most of the problem is because of insulin, so there's insulin, uh, I mean drugs for insulin, so some kind of manufactured insulin. But as long as, you know, it's like you are trying to out-compete the insulin, I, I don't know. Maybe if somebody knows about that. But it could be a smart idea, you know, but the key thing really is to to stop your, you know, system from secreting insulin. Are there questions? Yes. Um, yes. Have you, I, don't, I don't know if you've eaten at the cafeteria a lot, but would you say that there are daily good choices then? Because at the cafeteria, you can't really read your food labels there because it's kind of just out for you already. Mm -hmm. But would you say that there are good food choices at the cafeteria here to be making smart choices every day with? Now, I think that's up the cafeteria and maybe the industrial forest. But at least there are certain things you can avoid eating too much of carbohydrates. I see, at least I see when I go to the cafeteria, there are some, you know, salads, you know, all those kinds of things there. So you can, I mean, knowing, you know, you can look at some of the stuff and choose. If you are going for a lot of pasta, you know, not that you don't have to enjoy, you know, but the key thing is to have, especially if you are trying to lose weight, you really need to, to monitor exactly what you are eating. Now, if you go, like, for example, there are some of those sweeteners which are there anyway. You don't go using them. Hello. So people that are obese, they have problems with um, like diabetes and things like that, which is a problem with your insulin. How does, how does that like, work with their, their problem with um, gaining weight if their insulin levels are, like, the body isn't producing insulin? I didn't get that. With, like, if people are obese, they yeah. also have diabetes, yeah. where there's problems with their insulin production, um, 
How is it, like is their body still is insulin still the problem in their weight gain? Now the the problem for like now if the body is no longer sensitive, you know, if you are having insulin resistance, that can cause you a problem with diabetes. Okay. Or if you are if the beta cells are you know, beta they are, they are punched out because of overuse, you know, you can't produce it. So, is it too much insulin that causes insulin resistance, or what causes the resistance? To insulin? Too much sugar. Too much sugar. Yeah. Too much sugar in your bloodstream. All right. Well, if you want to have a practical lab experiment here with respect to food, we're going to lunch here. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can join us and watch what Dr. Holloway eats or have him choose for you what you should be eating. And, um, so, so we'll be sitting in the stage area today. We don't have the choice room. We'll be out there in the stage area. So please come and join us. Let us be, um, glorify God uh, eating.